how many of you have worked with video before? Having students, have any of you have the same problem with the flash drives coming in and, oh, you did it in iMovie, but it doesn't work on my Windows machine, or, or oh, I don't have that video player. Or it was pulled down from YouTube. Or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got that so This file format thing has come up. This term. Just this, this term. term. Yeah. Uh, so can, can you give us one? What was the project? Uh, okay, so the, the two days were the front line of dealing with it, but um, so That's I don't know too much detail. But um, the our, our goal with this was to, uh, it was called a minds on project for a dynamics class. And we said, go find out something dynamic, take a video of it, maybe annotate the video, and upload it. You know, Six to 10 seconds, just a really short thing. But that re resulted in mobs and AVIs and MP4s Ooh. and every, you know just everything, and they stuffed it into a Dropbox on the Moodle oh. page. <laughs> and you need to talk to me about the timeline feature in Kaltura because you can upload a video and then at any point in the timeline you can insert notes and comments in the timeline. Yeah, I, so th that wasn't it wasn't that type of video the, or annotation that we were doing in particular, like a like comments on a video. Typically. It wasn't that. It wasn't exactly that, but but. That will be useful too. So I, I do <laughs> want to learn about it, of course. But so it was just a file formatting problem that just caused our TA to. You know, and then they during the rain, they were February and they got graded last Friday. You know, oh wow! Right? So it took a long time. <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, it took wow. a long time to yeah. get through that. Yeah. Yes. So that's a that's a big one. Yeah. So yes, yeah, students have full access to Kaltura Media Space just like you do. So anyone with a NetID can log in and do everything that you're doing. So they can create the interactive video quizzes. They can do the webcam recordings, every single thing you can do, they can do. Anybody else want to share any successes or failures? That was a little bit of a fa failure, but successful because you got it graded. <laughs> That's good. Some of them were really cool. Um, I had my students do video introductions on, and then just do it on YouTube, and that way I was able to just click on the link and do that. And I know that I could do the same thing in Kaltura, but I figured they were already for semester freshmen, and they were already yeah. familiar with Google, so I just stuck with Google. But that was good because it was embarrassing for them. Um, and if you do things together as a group, it's embarrassing, then it builds that sort of classroom cohesiveness. FYI, Google is turning off their webcam recorder because it's based on Flash. So just awesome. FYI. <laughs> that's actually, uh, we used to have a Flash-based uh, webcam recorder, and that's why we replaced it with the tool we're talking about today, Capture Space Lite because I don't know how much you know about the tech geek stuff, but probably most people have heard that Flash equals bad and kind of like Java equals <coughs> bad. So we're steadily working on stripping out all those things and other companies like Google are as well. But they haven't said they're going to replace it with anything. They're just getting rid of it. So. Cool. Well, I guess without further ado, have you all experimented with Capture Space Lite? Or some of you have, some of you haven't? Okay. Have you guys experimented with Camtasia or ScreenFlow or um, what's the one for screen record? QuickTime does it as well. It's built into all your Macs, QuickTime X. Well, so it's something very comparable to that. Um, it's not a Camtasia because Camtasia is you know a hundred dollar or a hundred and eighty dollar on PC tool that does a whole bunch of stuff like video editing and it's crazy cool. It's it's a lighter version of that. So. Um, basically how it works is I'm in here in media space. I'm going to log in. And then at any points I have here up in the right hand corner, add new and capture space light. Uh, there's a few other options. I'm not going to go over today. Well, I'll be going over video quiz, but media upload, if you happen to have a whole bunch of video files in random formats, you can upload them and uh, Kaltura will chew through all the crazy formats. It will put them into a, a, a format that is easily to watch and view and you won't have to deal with any kind of codecs or anything like that. And then YouTube, uh, what you can do if you want to aggregate all of your media into one place, you can actually have all of your videos from YouTube put into like a Kaltura shell so they can all show up in a channel in Kaltura so you don't have your students going to all these different places to consume their media. 
uh, if you want to do that. You don't have to necessarily. Do, do we have to worry about, <coughs> I just wrote YouTube, but I just put the link. Yep. Do we have to worry about copyrights or anything if I use that? Uh, so if you use this, it is not downloading YouTube videos. Okay. All it is doing is playing the YouTube video inside of a Kaltura player. So if that YouTube video goes down on Google's site, if it goes down, in, it'll go down in your site. So I'm not downloading them. You're not. Okay. No. A good question. Josh, one more question on the YouTube thing. Can you still add like the video cuisine and such in YouTube? Um, I'll have to double check. Yes, I, because I did that. Yes, they did. The well, helpers did. So I know it works with audio files, video files, and YouTube. So. Cool. And then also, does it strip the ads out of YouTube? Don't know. Did you have ads in yours? I don't think so, because I played the, the one. I, I'm going to check right now. But and I played like, one that you put in there. And I what if you're adding a URL and it's from your logged in UW Madison, Google Apps, YouTube? I, I don't know. Yeah. All right. So basically, what you do is you click the Capture Space Lights. And if you do not. If you do not currently have, well, I'm using a funky browser here. If you do not currently have Capture Space Lite installed, this little screen here in the background gives you links to install it. And it's a desktop application. So it works for Windows and Mac, like it says here. Uh, so you download the file. You do your regular install process like you've done with other programs. But then in the future, when you come to it, if it's already installed, it will just launch this application right here. and this. Put it right in the center for us. And we did that yesterday. This is a computer that I hadn't used it on yet. And it inside of two minutes, I, it was installed and I was using it. So oh, yeah. it's not a It's a process. tiny. <laughs> it's it's like a tiny. Yeah. yeah. It's really easy. So, and then this is simple and straightforward. It's do you want to record your screen and your microphone? Do you want to record your screen, your webcam, and your microphone? Your webcam and your microphone, or just your microphone? So you could do a quick audio commentary if you want to. Um, so let's see here. I will do screen and mic. Well, let's let's go for the full thing. Let's do screen, microphone, and webcam. Let's see, we could blow it up on my old old Surface tablet here. Uh, so you can either. What's kind of cool if you're recording your screen, you can select it a, a different a smaller area. You don't have to record your entire screen necessarily. So you can kind of like set up a stage and bring stuff on the stage if you want to. Or you could just record your whole screen. So I hit record, similar to Camtasia. You get a little prompt here. Hit Alt-P to pause. Hit Alt-D to do the drawing tools. Or as we found out today, you saw on a Windows computer, uh, on Mac you have to click the icon that is in your dock to get the drawing tools to show up. So I'm presenting right now. So if I wanted to, I could uh, open up a PowerPoint and record the PowerPoint in the background. You would have to make room in your PowerPoint for where the webcam is showing up. Uh, so if you do decide to do it on top of the PowerPoint, all you need to do is just make sure you have a little square area in your PowerPoint that doesn't have any stuff in it. Good helpful to uh, So yes, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Alt-D. And now I get drawing tools. Um, so I can Google. Uh, so I can say, you know, oops, if I actually would hit drawing tools. Uh, and I can draw on this and say, yes, that's really important. And then I can clear it out. And I can draw circles around things to emphasize points. And it's recording all of that. And I can clear it out. If I want to, I can hit Alt-P to pause. And so now it's not recording anymore. So I can kind of collect my thoughts and whatnot. We can hit resume. And yeah, I like the arrow tool, just pointing out things would be really nice. <laughs> you can select different colors and stuff. Kind of straightforward. So now I'm going to hit Alt-P to pause. And I'm going to say that I am done. And it will automatically pull up this editor and preview. That's very loud, sorry. <laughs> and you did show that you can move that window, and you can also resize it, your window, your face? Yes. Wait, what? You can, you can, you can move that, the webcam window, and resize it. Oh, yeah, when I'm recording, you can. 
Uh, I thought you meant right here in editing. Oh, yeah. Editing, yeah. you can't, sorry, yes. So while you're recording, when the webcam view is up there, you can move it into different spots. So if you do find that your face is sitting on top of something, you can move it out of the way. So here, you're able to come in and do uh, rudimentary editing. So you can trim the clip. So you could just cut off the ends. If you do some prep work at the beginning and have a little bit of dead space or dead air on the end, you could just clip those off. Or you could come in and you can chop from the center. So if you have a chunk where you uh, messed something up, you can come in and just say, yep, I'm gonna get rid of a chunk for two minutes in the middle. Um, I usually don't highlight titles and credits because they're really old looking. They kind of look like PowerPoint from 1995. So. Uh, I don't recommend using those. <laughs> but then you hit done, and then in the capture space window here, you can give it a title. And you can give it a description, some tags if you want to. Uh, if you just hit save, it will save the file locally on your computer, which is just a regular MP4 video file. So if you wanted to, you could take that and put it into a video editor and tweak it further if you wanted to. Otherwise, you could just say, okay, I'm all good, and hit upload, and it will put it into your media library inside of Mediaspace. So you can use this to create things and then upload it to Facebook if you wanted to, through the saving of the yep. video file or YouTube or Vimeo or whatever. Yeah. So if you happen to not have a screen recording or webcam recording tool on your computer, you can use it for that. Any questions about Capture Space Live? And so this is like Screencastic or some of the other yeah, screen screencast o -matic and screencast o -matic, all that. Yeah. Or uh, what was the Jing, was the Flash-based one that librarians used a lot. Jing, yeah. <coughs> no questions? Show you more magic? OK. <laughs> Quick question of the group. Do you have processes that you would be able to show students? Is this useful? Are there things that you, you do in class that students are like, how did you do that? that making a screencast would be useful? Yeah, and so this is a quick, like, where I've seen this used a lot of times before, I'm an online student right now, so it's very handy with online and hybrid classes. If there is something that, like in the discussion forums, the students are getting so confused about it, if it's something you can do on the screen and just pull it up and describe what's happening really quick, I mean, a picture's worth a thousand words. So you just pull up this, Pull this up really quick, pull up the program or the image or the website and say, no, it's this part right here and this is applying to this theory and just post it right inside of your LMS or wherever you're posting your videos for your students. I can even see it as a tour for the LMS, for your course site, like, like here for the assignments. Um, also, it's good, like, you know, occasionally you could try, especially if you're an online only class or a hybrid class, try having uh, like John was saying, instead of doing text-based introductions, have them do video introductions, just because then it, trust me, I'm in an online-only program, and I'm at the end of it, uh, it's been about two years now, and it is so non-human, it's so cold, so you kind of like, whenever you're in the class, you're like, oh please, any kind of real human interaction. <laughs> My last class happens to be really good. We have uh, two uh, web conferences every week, so that's been really good, but the entire prior part of it, there's been no actual faces or anything, so. All right, you can also do just simple audio commentary, things like that. So I'm going to hit close here. Actually, I probably should have hit media space. Something to highlight here, um, I definitely recommend I wish I had the power to designate default settings for y'all because I don't like the default settings they have currently. I have submitted a bug request or a bug report. But really, once you download it, really go into settings and at least set your webcam to 720p. Most of your laptops are, I know all the Mac laptops are gonna support it, the PC ones might not, but that at least gets it a good quality. Um, unless you want your webcam to be fuzzy, maybe you didn't do your hair that day. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, and then also, I, depending on your screen resolution, like most of the Macs will be fine. I usually up it to the 1080p. Um, 720p is probably fine, but I usually put it on 1080p as well. And so just in the settings then is also where you see, where you make sure you have audio. Like you can see here, I have the microphone going off right there. And if you happen to have not that much room on your computer, you can have it automatically delete the recordings. 
Is that where you can set the levels for the microphone as well, so it's not overly? Uh, the levels for the microphone, you just do that in your system. Okay. So in Windows, you go into the control panel, uh, the playback settings, uh, and then system preferences on the Mac, and just adjust the mic level. Is there a way to attach a transcript or any other kind of metadata to this for, say, accessibility purposes? You bet. So it has captioning, and you can attach any file to any of the videos once you've uploaded them to MediaSpace. Really? Yep. You can even do it on that timeline tool if you want to. They have it be at certain spots, or you could just have it attached to the entire video overall. So okay. If I don't show everyone that by the end, just come grab me, and I'll show you afterwards. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to hop back into MediaSpace. We've been talking long enough now that it's probably um, processed the video file. I'm sure you can still see me there. Yep, so here's my awesome demo. And I obviously had my mic levels way too high. I violated the first rule of recording, check your mic levels first and do a test. <laughs> well, it's also good to have it, if you're going to do this as an instructor, invest in a microphone, invest in a USB microphone, because these are better than they used to be, but they're still pretty terrible. Yeah. But a lot of us around the office has, uh, they sell it for about $25 at Amazon and about $30 at the tech store is a Logitech USB uh, headset. It's small, straightforward, and it gets you a lot better audio quality. All right, so now that I have this video uploaded, I can turn it into a quiz, because this is perfect video for a quiz here. <laughs> what level should have I set my microphone to? Oh, that's got to be my question. All right, so I'm back in media space here, and we come back up to Add New, and I'm going to click Add Video Quiz. I guess uh, before I jump into actually the how, I should probably talk a little bit about the why. Uh, I have run into this a lot in my online courses where you get a PowerPoint presentation that's been recorded, you know, they record the screen and then they talk on top of the PowerPoint presentation and it's, you know, 10 minutes, 20, 30. Um, <laughs> attention spans get a little um, non-existent at 30 minutes. So where interactive video quizzing really can help out is uh, formative assessment for your students. So they can do their own kind of knowledge check and then you can just pause and kind of like what I said in the WordPress page, it's the digital equivalent of saying, hey, are you really getting this? If not, you should probably back up the video and watch that again or refer to this PDF that it's attached or look at this website in the, the course. So. Really, that's what I see it being used for. I wouldn't use it for a large summative assessment, like do an hour-long video and then have 20 questions at the end. That's not really what this is for. You could also use it for just general polling as well, because any uh, interactive video quiz can be pulled out of here and embedded into any sites anywhere. So, all right, so I'll show it to you really quick, and then we can do some questions. Uh, so I clicked Add New Video Quiz, and what I have to do is select some media that I previously have uploaded, or I can upload some new media. I'm going to use the awesome demo. Click Select there. And that takes me to the quiz editor. And so I can set up the name of the quiz, sound check. I can do a little welcome message, some prompt for them. Say, uh, make sure you've read uh, chapter four in Clark before you come to this uh, video quiz, something like that. Uh, you can decide whether or not you want to provide the list of questions beforehand. That's kind of handy to get a little prompt and they can download a PDF that's a list of all the questions you're about to make. Oh. You didn't try that part out? No, and does it include time codes? Like you should be answering this question at this time code? Oh, I can't remember. It's a good that question. Can you write that down? I don't remember. Yes. That enough. Uh, and then the in-video tip is if you want to give them hints on some of the questions. 
So I'm going to keep everything turned on for the demonstration. I'm going to hit apply on that. Do you want them to be able to edit their answers? And do you want them to be able to skip questions and come back to them later? That's simply what this screen says. So if that is not skipped, then before they can do any proceeding, they have to finish it. They have to, they have to answer, yes. And the data is collected. The data is all collected. Um, it does not integrate with D2L or Moodle. It integrates beautifully with Canvas and populates automatically into the gradebook in Canvas. Hmm. But, so if you want to get to the data manually right now, you can within media space. It gives you a list of all the users and their responses. So you can like export that? Into like yes, it exports to a CSV, uh, Excel file basically. All right, so then we just have a few more features. Uh, do not show scores or show scores, pretty straightforward. And do we want to, uh, do we want to allow them to see the answers or not? And then would that come through at the very end, or is it as they go? Uh, showing them the answers? The answer, right. Uh, I can't remember right now that I'm on the spot, but okay. let's give it a shot. Okay. <laughs> All right, so then uh, how to add a question. You can play the video, or you could just put the video at certain times, uh, time spots in the timeline. Oh, the horrible audio. You get this plus in the center that I just made disappear. There we go. And I do, I have already sent in a uh, feature request about the color palette that yeah. I chose for this. It's not exactly uh, accessible. Um, so. Thanks for doing that. All right, so then the green question on here is the correct one, so. Okay, and I can keep adding. And okay, so the other plus button added a quiz question, but this plus button adds another option. This is the black plus one. Black versus blue, okay. So then we can just add right there. You can click on the light bulb too. Yep. So 150, and then what I'm going to point out is you can randomize the responses. Once you've set the correct one, you can then randomize the responses. Uh, and then the light bulb, that is where you provide the hints. Add a question hints. Uh, lower was better. <laughs> and then add explanation for the correct answer. Uh, it hurt my ears. All right. When you added the hint, does that hint show up only when they've selected an incorrect answer, or does that hint show up just with the question? I do not recall, but we'll play it back okay. and we'll uh, see if it answers your question. Sure. You can preview the quiz right now, right? Yep. There's a preview button. Oh, of course, the audio is going to play. Oh, God. <laughs> is multiple guests the only type of Currently, yes. question? Currently, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it would have to be something, yeah, currently it's the only one. So there you go. Here's the welcome screen. That we was change all this text. text mm -hmm. right? Here was the, the pre-test. Let's check and see if it had the... Uh, It doesn't have them in there. It oh. hasn't been saved yet because this is just oh, a, preview. It's a preview. Oh, yeah, good point. Thank you. It was in about 15 seconds. I think it's failing on here. 17 seconds. I didn't even think I saved the question. Okay. Well, you shouldn't have to if you preview it, right? Well, I didn't save the question. Yeah, you. So but it's still there. You see on the timeline, it still has a little blue. It only added that after I just did save just now. Oh. See, now it's there. It did oh. say that it was a question. So then you can know that you're approaching a question. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Can you, can you go back a little bit to see how it goes into the question? 
Oh, yeah, sure. No, 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 just back in the video. And there's a hint. Oh. I think the Y was at the end. Oh, okay. So if you get one of the wrong answers, does it do nothing until you submit? Oh, okay. Yeah. So it doesn't automatically pop up the hint when you get it wrong. So what is that little blue box then? That's the, That's the end. end. That's the end. Is it possible to give feedback on the wrong answer? Uh, only with all that uh, the text boxes that are available are the ones that I showed you, so no-ish. <laughs> I mean, you could probably hack something in it. Um, like, yeah. Can you make more than one answer correct? No. Unless you do A and B. So then you can A keep- A and B, but not B. You can keep going and keep adding questions so on and so forth. Let me just show you um, quickly where in the media library you could, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I'm trying to get out of this. So I'm gonna come into my media library and instead of view all media, I'm gonna say, show me all my quizzes. I'll come into something I did. <laughs> Snap finger quiz. Um, basically, you come in. I'm not gonna have data populated on these. Especially Isn't that the video we just made? Yeah. Why is it called sound check now? That's what he I called the it. quiz. He named it. So if <laughs> you don't, okay. if you don't name it something different, it keeps the same name but adds the word quiz, quiz after it. How do you notice when you change? Can you pull multiple quizzes within one video? Multiple questions? Multiple questions. Oh, okay. So you can put a one second 15, one in second 30, and one in whatever. And then there would all be big with one quiz, but it's multiple questions. Because it saves it as the video with the quiz embedded. So Amy did this the other day. So we had a we uploaded the silly she uploaded the silly dog video. So now there's a dog video and there's another version of the dog video that has the quiz attached. And it's dog video with quiz is the title of it. Is that what you were asking? Um, I was just wondering, like, naming the quiz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? You just added one question to that quiz. Yeah. When, if you add multiple, can you, um, I guess, can you go through the specific question? That's what I'm asking. Or is this for, for analytics? Like to look I at guess I didn't know if uh, when you went to that other view just now, it has the quiz, right? It's mm -hmm. not, if you have multiple questions, they're all here within that quiz. They're now listing the yes. questions. Yes. Yeah. They, they don't show, yeah, each question on the quiz does not show up as a separate file in the My Media space. Right, the right. My Media has the video with the quiz embedded, however many questions are inside that quiz. It's all in that one bit of media. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Okay. And you said like if you have multiple questions at the end, you can get like a CSV file with the names and the results. Yeah, I'm pulling up one of my test uh, instances right now that probably have more responses in it. So I'm going into my media, showing just my quizzes. And I think I have a yeah, free versus open source. And it's where all the analytics are for your videos. This one I think I just shared publicly, so it doesn't have a user's name on it because it was just random unknown users mm -hmm. taking the quiz on it. But if you had it behind a course where they have to authenticate, they can you can grab the net ID or it will grab the net ID. So 
So there was a caption and stuff. I don't know if you saw that as a group. Mm -mm. No, it was test. That doesn't. That's not where it is for uh, production. Oh. <laughs> you click on the. Yep, quiz questions, uh, export to CSV. This one, I think I broke this one. Oops. Ah, sorry, the trackpad on this guy kind of. No, but anyway, no, that's great. You don't have anything to Yeah. So this one didn't have any of the responses listed in it, but it's basically you would see the users and then the responses underneath it. So if I use this quiz for let's say one class today, one course, and then I want to use it for next semester, do I have to do a new one or it will be added to that file? I would do a new one. It would just add it. Just to the duplicate file. it. Duplicate yeah. it and put it in a different name or the date or something. Yeah. Okay. And then you get a, a different result for each. All right, more questions. If you were to do that duplication operation, does it then eliminate the responses that have, uh, I mean, <laughs> do you have to clear anything out after that? Or will it duplicate the video with the quiz but not the answers as given? Right, <laughs> wait, say that last part again? Not the responses. Will how it, much copy? Du how duplicated is duplicated? Yeah. Are they a copy of all the solutions people gave or not? Let's write that down. All right. Yeah, because let's say I use now for this semester, and I get, I mean, my classes are 500, 700. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't want all that. So if I do it again in the fall, can I duplicate it? Do I bring those 700 answers? Or As of right now, there isn't a mechanism to delete responses from the quizzes. So, so yes. when you duplicate, you duplicate. As far as everything. I know. In the, in the we would have, that I don't know. Okay. So we have to double check. Yeah, because I don't want to keep having like make thousands of a, people. Like, make yourself uh, a copy with no solution. You, know, you don't let anyone answer first. And would it or I don't know you have any copy before you administer the quiz, right. and then you have an empty copy sitting there. Or would the CSV also include the date that it was that they were taken? It's not going to go on the source review of 700 students. Yeah, but if you sort of by date. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but the no, question right. is also like, like if you, can I edit that file? Can I delete it? Or what it? You know what I mean? I don't want to be having those people over and well, over. Well, once you download the CSV file, you can do whatever you want with the CSV file. Yeah, but if I do the video, do I do Right, that's what we don't know. So that's okay. why we're talking the question okay. to ask. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yep, I don't have enough uh, responses of any of mine. We literally just turned this on yesterday. So <laughs> that's a spectacular question, and it's worth testing. But fortunately, I have two PAs that know the quizzing tool quite well, so we could uh, whip up some no, Actually, I, I how many times did you guys take the, um, Amy's the quiz? dog fail quiz? I, I didn't ever take it. Oh. Wait, no, we didn't take the didn't quiz, take I don't it. think. She just made the quiz. Made them. Okay. Take it. You can Actually, take the dog we could fail. probably, in the time here, we could probably whip up a quiz and have everyone take it. Or they could take the dog fail quiz. There's only one question. So. Well, we should, we should have time for people to jump in and start making stuff. Definitely. Yes. Oh, so I do want to uh, show off just really quickly the shared repository concept. As really how the shared repository works is Shared repository is just a fancy name for a, a certain type of channel inside of Kaltura. And what it allows you to do is you have the shared repository and you can set it up so a whole bunch of people can contribute to it. And then you can create your own channels and pull out the media that you want into your channel. And there's instructions on how to do that. If you flip your page over onto the back, the second easy task there, the second task from the top is create shared repository. It tells you how to do it. And then right below that, the medium task Publish from publish from shared repository to your own channel. So those are the two things that Josh was talking about, and they're quite simple. I mean, you know, we've given you like three steps and four steps, and that's really as complicated as it is. So. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the one that did you add everyone to? Yes. Except Julie, because Julie hasn't logged in. You haven't logged into Media Space yet. No. And since you haven't logged in, you don't have a username, so I can't add you. But as soon as you log in, you'll have a username, and I can add you. Everybody else is in there as a, I created a shared repository called Active Teaching Lab Sandbox Shared Repository, which if you log in, Josh will show you where to find it. Excellent. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to click on Josh Harder, my name up in the right hand corner, and then I click on my channels. And then once again, you have the channel filters. There's the view channels I can manage. 
I'm going to look at shared repositories. I am a member of. And the one that Margaret is talking about is this guy right here, this Active Teaching Lab Sandbox. There's his dog, that's awesome. So you can create channel playlists, you can add media to it, uh, you can change the thumbnail of the shared repository. You can come in and people can just see what's in the shared repository. So now the real powerful thing, because how this could potentially be used is, you know, say there's a cohort of teachers teaching a few courses together, you want to use different videos at different parts and different sections, you would just have one repository, and the, then you individually would go into media space and create your own channel. So I'm going to go to my channels. I'm going to hit create channel. I'm going to call it active teaching section one. I have a whole bunch of stuff on here. I'm going to make it public. I have a few extra things because I'm an admin. I'm just going to say these do not look familiar. <laughs> That's because they're in the end. <laughs> there we go. So my channel has been created. And then I'm going to actually go to the channel, which I could have done by clicking the name of it here. And I'm going to add to channel. What Wi-Fi am I on? Ah, here we go. So and then I'm going to totally just walk. It's the shared repositories to the bottom left. Ah, thank you. Yep. And so then if I come down, I can either add stuff from my media to the channel, or if I click on the shared repositories drop down, I can get to the Active Teaching Lab sandbox. And I could pull in, oh, do we have the dog video? Oh, excellent. That's the quiz one. That's the quiz one. You can tell there's a little icon that says quiz, that's quiz in the name. I'm going to pull this little screen capture from John. And I could pull in multiple right now if I wanted to. Uh, and then I hit publish. You didn't hit the dog one. Nah, that's all right. I don't need to have the dog. So there. It's cute as I. Oh, he uses a screen capture. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have my own channel where I pulled in um, videos from a joint shared repository. Another reason I'm highlighting this because this also works really well in Canvas, and you can see shared repositories right inside of Canvas, <coughs> and you can pull in those videos right into different assets inside of your course, like a page or something like that. And you can also do that with a playlist. In yes. Canvas. Are we officially moving to Canvas or adding Canvas? Uh, we are officially adding Canvas. That's what we're officially doing. Yeah. With Will we, in the future, be moving to Canvas? There is an intention to move so to it. We're going to create a new thing from scratch here because the new campus. Yeah, but I tried to do that, yeah. and I've been told that not, not yet. Yeah, so I've been waiting forever. They just, they're, they just announced that as of May 2nd, you can start to create for fall. Yes. Okay. But nothing, don't I plan on using summer. it for the summer. I tried for the summer and missed it. Right. Uh, I will be right for the summer. Um, so yeah, I mean, part of the reason we're moving to Canvas is because external tools integrate better into the learning management system than it does in others. A lot of these features aren't integrated fully into Moodle or G2L. So like the interactive video quiz, you can create that as an assignment in Canvas and it automatically gets populated to the gradebook when they're done. Um, so it could be like a participation point in your course if you wanted. Or Would that be the same? for non-timetable, like open enrollment courses? Do you <coughs> have one for all visa holders of a certain time for international students? Or individual. Not to use a real <laughs> example. <laughs> Aesthetically. <laughs> <That's laughs> uh, so I don't know the specifics of the question there. Like, you know, uh, I know at this point they're not having Canvas for non-timetable things at this point. So in the future, it's going to be um, credit 
I forget the exact term for it, but uh, credit courses within the course guide starting on May 2nd, at this point. Even if we're on the list? I don't know. I will refer you to the project manager, Bethany Gordy. No problem. No problem. Yes. Um, so that integrates with it as well. They could also turn in video assignments using Kaltura as well. Um, so when they go into a play, like you know, similar to the D2L Dropbox or the Moodle equivalent, uh, if they go into turn in an assignment, they can select uh, their media from Kaltura. Send it to you. on what you set the permissions to on the video. Okay. So you could set the permissions on the video such that anybody can see it. There's an unlisted option on videos if you want to just not deal with channels or any of that stuff and you just want to have your stuff and you're making it so your students can see it. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to, you could just set the videos unlisted and put the link in your LMS or your website or whatever. Um, or you could put it in a public channel if you wanted to uh, and then the world could also see it there as well. And they could find it. They could find it in the public one as well. Uh, there's also another different channel setting where it's just authenticated users, uh, similar to like Google Drive and Box permissions, or Google Drive at least, where it's like authenticated UW Mass and people can see it. I think it's uh, restricted is the name of the. But if you have more questions about any of the permissions, just, yeah. So I know, Lauren, that you have a question, but let's make sure that you everybody gets a chance to get in and do some hands-on with this. Um, because after you get in and start to play, you will have more questions. Oh, yeah. You'll have more informed questions.